Hey YouTube, today we're going to be talking about oscilloscopes. And yes, an oscilloscope is that weird science-y looking thing right in front of you. <clears throat> but what does it do? Well, it allows uh, engineers, or mainly electronics engineers, or just anybody who needs to use it in general, to process electrical signals and graph them. Hence the little screen here with the graph on it. And we will be talking that a in a little bit. So, let's, for starters, let's turn it on. And you can see that the power button and the, the on-off is down here. Light comes on, and the system warms up. Now, also, if you notice, we're using a Tektronix. It's a 2236 model. So, if you're using an oscilloscope um, and you don't have this particular model, you'll find that maybe some of the buttons are in different spots, or maybe the knobs are a little different. But for the most part, the general concepts are the same. But now that it's on, you're lo probably looking at it and going, oh my god, it's a flat line. Like, no, like really, this is, you know, so interesting. But what you have to understand is we need to feed a signal through it. So there's no signal, so there's a flat line. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the function generator up here, and we're going to turn it on. And as if we back up just a little bit, as we turn it on, there you go. We get a wave. And you can see that we're processing the wave, the sine wave from this function generator, into the oscilloscope. <clears throat> now, and you can see... As we change, so here we're changing the amplitude, as we change it, you can see the scope represents the change on the graph. And we can do the same with frequency. So as the frequency goes up, you can see that the wave's getting more compressed. As the frequency goes down, as you can see, it gets more, it spreads out. Now, let's get this back to one kilohertz exactly. Let's grab our fine. So that's close enough. So you can see that we're putting about a one ki kilohertz wave, and you can see one and the uh, KZ, KHZ, bleh, that represents kilohertz. So some of the more basic functions, or I shouldn't say function buttons and stuff, are like your focus. You see, you want to nice, crisp, clear line when you're working with the oscilloscope, and I guess the camera's not the best for picking this up, and other things like intensity. So you can see the intensity's so low that it's not even putting a signal on the screen, but we can turn it up, and there you go, and you can get it super duper bright. But how about we just put it at medium. So if you do turn on your oscilloscope and you don't get a, a, anything, not even a line, you get no picture whatsoever, check your backlighting, check your intensity, because you'll find that that's mainly the problem. Now, the other main function is, you'll see that there's two channels here. Now, we're only using the one, but you can have two. And so, and you can see that there's uh, controls for both channels. So this and this are the same thing. The only difference is this works for channel 1, this works for channel 2. Same with these knobs up here. Now, what do these knobs do? Well, as you probably can see, is it says position. And this allows you to adjust the position of the wave. So if you want to get it exactly on those squares there, or those lines, it allows you to do that. And that's your up and down, or your vertical positioning. And there's your left and right, your horizontal. So as we back up and you can see we adjust the wave right there. So you're probably wondering also, what are these knobs here for? And also, you mentioned earlier about this graph. Well, like any ordinary graph, if we come down to our sheet here, <clears throat> has a function on it. This, In this case, we have a uh, sine function, but it has a function on it, and there's a y-axis and an x-axis. 
for this. So whether you're doing y equals mx plus b, which is this guy here, you're doing x squared, or the one we'll be talking about much more, the sine function, poorly drawn, because <laughs> I'm an engineer, not an artist. <laughs> so, but there's also divisions. So you have like a like this, like it can, this can be like one, two, you can have like a, th and a third division, or this can be represented as like two, four, six, you know, this could be 10, this could be 20, the same with your y. So this could be one, this could, you know, two, five, 10, this could be 100, this could be 200, it depends. Now, oscilloscopes give you the ability to adjust that. And we'll get to that in just a second. So as we said, this is your x, this is your y, the same for here, this is your y, and this is your x, y, x. Now, normally we express in math our x's and y's as numerical values, and they're just numerical values, nothing else. Well, with the oscilloscope, it's a little bit different, especially in electronics. This, your y values, which we'll be talking about first, is represented in volts peak to peak. Now, if we come over to the oscilloscope here, you notice that here is the main, the y-axis. Yes, and yes, there's going to be math involved. So it does benefit you to pay attention in your math classes. So here's your, and here's your y. Now, when they say peak to peak, they mean highest to lowest. And that's what the easiest thing to measure on the oscilloscope. So if we noticed, if you notice, it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, I'm sorry, I'm counting that wrong. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, there we go. Six divisions, or these little, like, square things from the top of the wave to the bottom of the wave. Again, peak to peak. <clears throat> so, come over to a blank piece of paper, and we have six, and we'll abbreviate it as D-I-V for division. Now, as we talked earlier, the divisions on our normal graphs have to have a value. Well, the same is true. And as you can see, if we go to channel 1 and we go to volts per division, you can see we have it set to 2. So if we have 6 divisions and we have, and we multiply that by 2 divisions... I'm sorry, two volts per division, DIV, divisions will cancel, and you'll be left, be left with 12 volts, peak to peak, or you'll see it represented as 12 VPP, so much easier, for 12 volts peak to peak. Now, I, and you're probably wondering, well, you said earlier you can adjust it. No, it, we can. And you can see we go to our knob here, and you can see we turned it to 1 volt per division. And now we'll turn it to back to 2 and down to 5. Now, if you notice, let's leave it on 5 and try the same thing. We haven't changed the wave at all. We've just changed the scale that it's being displayed on. So if you notice, we'll count 1, and each little individual line is 0.2 divisions. So there's 0.2, 1, so that's 1.2, 2.2, 2.4. And again, we'll come back to our sheet of paper, and we'll do 2.4 DIV for divisions times, and we're doing 5 divisions. I'm sorry, volts. It's 5 volts peak to peak per division. So the divisions cancel, and when you multiply this out, 
this will give you, again, 12 volts, peak to peak. So we haven't actually changed the wave, we've just changed the way it's being viewed. And we'll set that, oop, and we can even go up to 10, and the scale has a variety of ways to do it. We can go up to 50 volts, and you can see it's so small it almost looks like a line. All, and we can go all the way to, but there's point 0.1. It's letting us go all the way up to 20 millivolts, which is very, very small. That's like 0 0.02 volts. That's a very small amount. And you can see it's very, very there. So we put it back on 2 volts. Now, that's for the x-axis. We can also do it... I'm sorry, that's for the y-axis. We can also do it for the x-axis. Now... The y-axis is measured in volts peak to peak. The x-axis is measured in, and if I can write this one-handedly, P-E-R period. Now, if you've taken a physics or a math class, this, or uh, I should say math, um, tr a trigonometry, and you deal with sine, this should sound very familiar, because it is. There's your sine wave. And there you go. Now, we don't actually, thank God, we don't express things in pi or half pi, or we use normal numbers. <laughs> but <clears throat> um, we do have units, and this time it's in seconds. And we can get down to a frac. When we mean a fraction of a second, we mean uh, six times ten to the negative. I'm sorry, one. Bleh. We can get down to units and microseconds, or one times ten to the negative six, which is a very, very, very f f small fraction of a second and a very, very fast time of the unit. As you can see, the little micro symbol right there. We also have milliseconds, the MS for milliseconds, and I, this does not go, uh, yeah, there you go, and it's the seconds, and you can see point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.5, so, here you go. Now, coming back and talking about our period, what kind of hurts is this is in, pe this is in period, and our scope is in frequency. Now you're probably wondering, first off, what is period in frequency? Period is how long does it take for the wave to get back to the same point? So from let's the easiest on this wave is from the top peak, the top peak here to the top peak here. So it takes, and we'll figure that in a second, but it takes time for it to go this. Hertz, or frequency, is how many times a second the wave goes from peak to peak. Now, if you notice, they sound like almost like the opposite, because they are. And mathematically, and we'll put P for period, and F for frequency, so is 1 over, so 1 over P equals the frequency, and 1 over frequency equals P, or period. So they're inverse, which is quite nice when you have to do your calculations. So just like what we did bef with the amplitude, we'll count the divisions. So one, so 1 division, 2 division, 3 division, 4 division, 5 divisions. And we'll go, so 5 div for division. Multiplied by. Now we come over to here to our scope, and we see that we're on 0.2, I know it's kind of hard to see, milliseconds. Now, milliseconds, you'll also see it is expressed as 10, as some, a number times 10 to the negative third. <clears throat> so it is 0 0.2 times 10 to the negative third. Now, when you do the math, 
and we make this milliseconds per division, the divisions cancel, and you will end up getting one millisecond. And if we take your one millisecond, or one times ten to the negative third seconds, and we put it over one to get our frequency, you'll end up getting one times ten to the third, or one kilohertz as it ex expressed there. And that's what we put into the scope. So there you, if you can get that into focus, come on, into focus. So there we go. As you can see, we've gotten one millisecond. We found out that we had one millisecond, we did it, and we got one kilohertz. And there we go, that's what we're about putting into the scope, one kilohertz. And just like what we did with the amplitude, we can do the same with the frequency, and we can adjust. So we can put that up to 0.5, and that compresses it even more. And we can put it down to 0.1. You can see 0.1. Come on. There we go, 0.1. And you can see. And ladies and gentlemen, that is how to use an oscilloscope. We'll probably have more videos coming up shortly about fun and interesting things about other types of waves because you can use oscilloscopes to view many different types of waves and we'll be talking more about maybe the function generator and some other things so stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe down you know hit that little button if you like the videos that you've been seeing and of course check out some of the other videos we have on the channel we have a lot of interesting stuff and we have a large variety of it so thanks for watching bye